I'm Stephen Bolt. I'm a lecturer at the University of Manchester. I'm also the owner and founder of Salamander Limited, which is a spin-out company that we set up to further the impact of NERC and other research that uh, I've been doing at the University of Manchester. My research was largely on pollutant mobility and the environment, and all the work we did tend to show that the data that we were using to try and work out how pollutants moved and where they moved to was not really of sufficient resolution to do the job. So we actually decided to start making our own equipment for making environmental measurements at higher temporal resolution and at low, low enough cost that we'd be able to get higher spatial resolution as well. So in, initially we made a series of uh, data loggers and um, environmental probes that would attach to the data loggers. And the data loggers were unique really in the marketplace at the time in that they were IP68, which means they're completely submersible. We took the products upstream, so away from looking at rivers, which was largely the sort of research we did, and uh, moved it to the other side of the water treatment works and started to monitor water in, in the distribution system. Once we did that, we could repackage the equipment we had made for monitoring in rivers and put it together to monitor water and distribution, water with a value. Those products were actually much more investable. So at the same time that we actually redesigned the products for a worthwhile market, we also got investment at the same time, and that changed the whole character of the company. I've been working on this device for a few years. It started out uh, on a noise transfer project at the University of Manchester, um, funded by Government Research Council. Uh, the idea being to work with customers to actually determine once you collect data at high resolution, what do you actually do to it uh, to turn it into some kind of actionable uh, cost saving for the customer? So I, I specifically worked on that and then I transferred into industry to work for Revocal Water Technologies. I'm now the product manager for our network solution range of products and solutions here in the UK and for export territories as well. The problem was that they weren't really able to see in uh, granular detail the quality of the water going into and out of reservoirs such as this. So therefore we developed this package whereby you can connect it to the water main via the hydrant point. Uh, it measures chlorine at high resolution and therefore you can see uh, with much more granular detail the decay of chlorine across service reservoirs in remote sites such as this and at very low uh, prices. Traditionally if you were to try and monitor at the same resolution without this technology you'd have to put the uh, mains power in, you'd have to put the telemetry in and you'd actually have to install uh, an online piece of kit permanently. We'd also been doing work on emissions of gases as well in the environment. We redesigned equipment that we'd got for monitoring in those environments to transform it into equipment for looking at brownfield redevelopment sites. And we made a device for monitoring gas emissions from brownfield development sites. Grand Gas Solutions were set up just over five years ago and it's largely based around uh, continuous monitoring of grand gas and, and we, we do that by using the gas clamp instrument that was set up and developed uh, at the University of Manchester. So we've had close ties with the university from the beginning, really. Historically, uh, grand gas concentrations were periodically um, monitored by site engineer going out to site once a week, once a month. When that data is collected, it is still quite a lot of un uncertainty, but with continuous monitoring, you have a much more robust assessment of the uh, grand gas regime, and that provides more confidence when you're developing a risk of a certain site. Environmental science only really exists as an, as an applied study, really, um, and I've stepped even closer to industry, really, in, in um, actually the ideas for what I need to do for research. I have to actually work uh, you have to have some knowledge of what's going on in industry in order to set an agenda for the environmental sciences. Um, and I, by having the spin out company, I've actually worked closer and closer with industry. And actually it's generated more and more interesting problems. In January this year, I was awarded the Economic Impact Award from the NERC, in their inaugural awards. It's the first time they've done these awards, and we were lucky enough to win. Um, and I took my team down that had been involved and the, the team were well where they've been three of my undergraduate students that have become PhD students and they actually had all worked as postdocs for me as well and two of them now work for the companies that distribute the products as well doing research for them and they've been part of this whole process so it's 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 been a long-term thing with long-term support from the NERC with these sort of long-term goals and people have been a long for the ride all the way along. We won £10,000, which is to be used to further the impact 
of the of the work and um, we've got projects identified working with um, Save the Children to use the water monitoring products um, in less developed countries where they're trying to maintain the disinfection level in areas that uh, where the water supply is breaking down. That's looking to generate an awful lot of publicity and, and hopefully quite a lot of impact. Mm -hmm.